Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here live in Las Vegas. We have all the action. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the ceiling from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined by my co host Paul Gillen, the SiliconANGLE, my co host here. And uh, we're live in, in uh, Las Vegas for IBM Impact. Our next guest is Scott Francis, CTO of BP3 for Business Process Improvements. Scott, welcome to the, uh, the show. Thank you, thank you, so, glad to be here. Uh, so what do you think about IBM Impact? What's your take real quick? You're our first guest. Well, you're out in the wild there, right. what's going on? Well, this has been a great conference for us for the last, we've been coming, I think this is our fifth time coming to Impact, and every year we've increased our investment in the conference. Uh, it's a great set of community and customers. A lot of our customers come to the conference, so it's a great time to reconnect. Uh, but it's also a great time to reconnect with IBM partners of ours, right? IBMers that we work with who are all over the world come to Impact to meet with their customers, so it's really just a great time for us to be here. Scott, the, the theme of this conference, the kickoff uh, of the, this morning's keynote was all about business reinvention. It was about the uh, constant, about really changing the way your business is organized, right. to constantly respond to changes in the marketplace. How does that relate to what you, the work you do with customers? Well, we think about major themes in technology like mobile and cloud and on-demand deployment of infrastructure. Uh, but at the end of the day, our job is to help customers and their job is to help their customers, right? And, and so at the end of the day, business processes, sort of the value that flows through those mobile applications and flows through those cloud deployments. So to us, it's what gives meaning to all this interesting infrastructure from hardware up to software. Uh, you know, really what, what adds value to it is your business process. But it seems to me that IBM is talking about something more transformational here, more than just business as usual or continual right. improvement. It's talking about really changing the way your organization is structured. Is that what you took yeah. away? Yeah, no, that's definitely what they're what they're talking about. I think it reflects sort of not just looking at incremental improvement, but really re-examining how you deliver your products and services to your customers. Many people tend to look at business process as sort of incremental change, but if you take a step back and you apply design thinking to your approach to your customers, to their customer experience, uh, you'll find that their whole business processes you don't have deployed in your enterprise that need to be created from scratch and that technology has really enabled different ways of engaging in your processes, different ways of engaging with customers that weren't possible you know, 10 years ago, five years ago. And so you have to constantly reevaluate uh, what's possible, the art of the possible for your customers, and you have to reevaluate what matters to your customers as the market changes. Scott, talk about the uh, enterprise story around cloud, hybrid cloud in particular. With DevOps, IBM is clearly all in at the Pulse conference. We got the Blue Mix story introduced. Right now kind of like, in terms of rolling it out, um, there's a build, grow kind of mentality going on right now. How far along are the enterprises really with DevOps? I mean, is it like, hey, we see it, the roadmap, we know where cloud is. What is it, uh, is there a clear roadmap? And, and what kinds of things do you need to put in place with, with uh, the, the customers around the processes? Is it awareness, is it education? Is there actually meat on the bone with the DevOps story? Right, well, I, I think that depending on which part of the enterprise you're talking about, there's a different level of maturity with respect to putting uh, ops in the cloud, right, and, and, and their DevOps. And so what we've observed is just over time, you know, BPM, business processes being one of the core assets of the company, a lot of companies have been reluctant to put that, those assets in the cloud, but gradually that's changing because the other assets that the business processes are interacting with are in the cloud. And so just gradually there's this sort of inevitable pull toward the cloud, toward cloud deployment, uh, either as a way to manage infrastructure or as a way to unlock value and, and services you just can't get to in your What in inning your are we in? What inning are we in yeah. with DevOps? Top of the first, national anthem, right. middle I, innings? I think we're <laughs> a second or third inning at best. You know, I think there's a long way to go with this. And people underestimate how big that still private hosting, you know, internal hardware you know, ecosystem is. And I think all of that eventually is moving to the cloud. Paul and I were talking on the intro segment around a term he called whiplash, which is, um, you know, and I call the airbags kind of deploying. I mean, are the enterprises, is it shock to them? Is it, they feel good about it? Is there a whiplash component with the cloud? How disruptive is this uh, cloud analytics component to the processes internally? Right, right. I think that there are probably some businesses where it does feel a bit like whiplash, but uh, I think that those, those businesses have been disrupted the most, been disrupted by, you know, an Amazon, for example, with respect to, you know, how they sell and disrupting retailers. That's where the sort of whiplash has really been. But when it comes to, you know, more traditional businesses, banking and, and uh, sort of insurance companies and things like that, it hasn't been so much whiplash, but this sort of realization that a really a new round of investment and, uh, and, and really rethinking their business processes is called for. 
Uh, uh, Scott, I'm yes. sorry. Uh, Amazon, right. Amazon has clearly been the, uh, uh, the, the first mover mm -hmm. and, and sort of the renegade in, in the cloud uh, business. Do you think IBM has a, a, a differentiated, IBM's cloud story is differentiated enough to, to appeal to the enterprise customers? Well, absolutely. The, if, you're an, if you're an enterprise customer of IBM and you're using IBM software and services, uh, you're going to find the experience of deploying IBM software on IBM SoftLayer on, on, on the cloud to be a smoother experience and, and transition than if you're switching to a whole new technology stack. And at PP3, we've had some experience deploying IBM software on multiple systems, so whether it's a Rackspace SoftLayer or a, we used GoGrid once and we've used uh, Amazon. And with SoftLayer, there's definitely an additional level of support and interference you know, where we can talk to SoftLayer and they'll actually get involved in the, in the deployment. You know, if you're deploying on some of these systems, it's well, you know, good luck, right? Uh, how about the hybrid cloud story? IBM is yep. clearly using that as the comeback to Amazon. The, the, the market's right. going to hybrid clouds. Is that what, what you see happening as well? Well, I think that's the transition, right? It, is that there will be a lot of hybrid solutions that cross the boundaries between cloud and internal systems and you need a, a trusted partner to help you make sure that that's set up right. So I, I think it's a good strategy for IBM to both preserve the investment their customers have made, not just abandon that investment, but also provide them a path forward as they move individual pieces of their infrastructure and solutions to the cloud. Scott, talk about my final questions. I know we're tight on time, yep. but it's, it's really around, what, can you share with the folks out there, what's the mindset in, in, the, in the marketplace, uh, in the trenches, on the front lines around developers? Obviously, enterprise developers have been around for decades and decades, going back to the mainframe 50 years ago, but now you're seeing, you know, with Agile, a new developer you know, growth cycle where it's just a little different. Uh, what's your take on the current developer mindset, the current conditions in the marketplace? Right, well, there's so much more possible as a developer in terms of what you can build easily. Uh, whether that's on the IBM stack or not, uh, the tools have just gotten so much better. Uh, even just in terms of take something simple like JavaScript, the tooling for JavaScript has improved dramatically over the last four or five years. So we're doing things on the IBM BPM stack with JavaScript libraries that I didn't think were possible two years ago and weren't possible five years ago, right? So it, that attitude, developers have an immense sort of optimism about the problems they can solve with software today. And, and, and the I database really too, no SQL database will open right. the door up significantly on the analytics side and, and so no, on that's and right. so forth. And being able to deploy those assets quickly in the cloud without a whole lot of headaches where developers really understand you know, certainly in my case and in our team's case, we understand the code and we understand how to write it, but the things where we may not have expertise or a developer may not have the expertise is how to get a, a database up, up and running quickly and set up right for HA and things like, and disaster recovery. And that's all so much easier in the cloud. So people are mostly in architectural phases right now, really kind of identifying the key areas that they want to deploy on cloud? Yeah, I think, I think that's, that's sort of what people are facing right now, but for developers, it's becoming a lot easier to prototype, like basically build out the solution using the cloud as the way to prototype the whole thing for a customer. And then when the customer says, well, some of this stuff has to be inside my infrastructure, some of it can be in the cloud, or all of it in the cloud, all of it in the internal infrastructure, at least you have the whole stack proved out, and then you can go through the process of reconciling. Hey, at least you can get a prototype out the door before right. it's PowerPoint slides, right? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Scott, thanks for coming on theCUBE. I uh, really appreciate it, super busy here. We're live on the ground here at IBM Impact in Las Vegas. We'll be right back with our next guest. This is theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, Paul Gillen. We'll be right back after this short break.